saying, I'm saying options coming in from our virtual lectern. I guess it may take some people a little while to come up with something, but um, you do have a minute. Um, take, um, take some time throughout the meeting until the table topic session where these really matter. <coughs> but please, I appreciate it if you guys send me your daily hot takes. Now, in the meantime, while we're um, in the meantime, while I'm gathering this data together, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like us to move on to our um, joke master, mm -hmm. our thought slash joke master. Mm -hmm. And that will come in the virtual excellence of the man who lit up this room the other day like it was an and the guy in the, the guy who has the hottest scene in the house, the wood that's about to blow up, <laughs> Master Nelson Smith. Can we put the bar for my place? Question, do you want to write their answers in the chat? No, I told, no. I told them no. this is the first time. Not. not oh, I said it was a private link. Him. Oh, okay. Private. I think it's not him. Jesus, y'all like failed. Thank you for that wonderful <laughs> introduction and then immediately stepping on it. I, I couldn't have done it better myself. Um, sorry for my lighting. My room has horrible lighting, but this is the only place with some AC in it. The only place where Satan can't get me in all this vehement summer heat. Can everyone hear me just fine? Yes. I can. Yeah. All right. So I'm not going to light up anybody today. I, I tend to save that for roast. I, I think of these things. I think of something almost every meeting, but I, I keep the best ones and I save it for the roast. The thought that I've had recently that has really impacted my life. I'm sure we are all familiar. Oh, the role of the thought joke master <laughs> is to present a thought or a joke to entertain the crowd in this case of a joke or to give you a thought a thought provoking idea to help you grow as a person. <clears throat> so the thought that I've had recently that's really been impacting my life. I'm sure we've all had to change the way we've spoken in different ways in the past as society develops and we become more empathetic toward people. So I'm sure maybe as a kid, you may have used um, what some people call the R word. It's not necessarily a bad word, but a retarded. But we, we now call people with mental disabilities. Um, we say other, we use other words. Or you may have grown up in recent times, we've not people are now trying to get people to say they them instead of gendering everybody and everything, and that's that's for some people a difficult transition. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes it's a good thing to change the way you speak about things. One, a new one that I've heard recently, and I think it's very good, is instead of saying ancestors or forefathers or or forebears when we're talking about the people who came before us who made great sacrifices people who were sold into slavery people who fought for equal rights it may be a good idea to call those people family and i've been doing that for the last two weeks and it's 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 particularly important now in this independence season we're celebrating as we talk about issues surrounding slavery and oppression of our family, it gives it a different ring. It, it takes away that distance. Because when you think about the people who were denied the right to vote, they weren't, you can think of them as your ancestors, but that, that creates distance. But if you think of them as your family, which some of these people genuinely were, my great grandmother was one of those people. I think it's a better way to think about that. And I hope this, thought will resonate with you and I hope you can let it marinate in your mind and maybe you can start to think of your ancestors as your family. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that interesting thought of the day. So let's, okay, so let's continue the thing. Like I was saying earlier about um, the Hini Hathis, they could be anything from any shape or size. Like, for instance, they could be from personal bias to an open conversation to, again, like a Hini Hathis moment. Like, for instance, my personal bias, hot take, is actually that baseball should be the Bahamas national sport. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's a personal bias because I actually played baseball. And not only have I played baseball, but I also played with somebody who's in the MLB right now and killing it. He's also the office cover of MLB The Show, oh. Jazz Chisholm. I oh, played, I played okay. baseball with him. And um, I also met Anton Richardson, who was also a former New York Yankee. I feel like our leg in baseball, or our history in baseball, is rich enough in comparison to other sports for it to really be hit. That's my personal bias. Other people may disagree with it. Everyone disagrees, but we still appreciate <laughs> the <baseball. laughs> oh, We appreciate your love baseball. That's wonderful. I don't disagree. Thank you. We're not making an American sport. Okay. <laughs> no. If we did a hard. Okay, okay. Pop quiz. Pop quiz, everybody. Pop quiz. I feel this. Okay. <laughs> what <laughs> is the Bahamas national sport? Sailing. Sailing. It is now sailing. Now. Yes, it is now. It is now sailing? It is now sailing. I love how yes, is like cricket. This year. Okay. After sailing. After yes. <laughs> okay. Good job. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for that. Um, all these years in cricket, which is actually a British sport, which is why I'm so interested in you to bring up the annual sport versus an American sport. At least now we have an official one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, but then again, is sailing really a Canadian sport? Or is it just a sport? Um, mm, not just one. The sport itself, yes. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know what that sound is, but until we figure out that sound, and until I get a few more hot takes, which I'm still waiting on, um, I'd like to move on to our to the next person on the agenda, which is our lexicologist in the form of our flamingo and Abu Marlin, Toastmaster Daniel. <laughs> You would have known! Ah, Check that! Honey! Oh, oh my god! From, not the flamingo and the blue mountain. My boy called you a flamingo marlin hybrid. Like, like, like we, we were the Norris Ark and it was like. like put those words together, that could be a name for President of the Year. Wow! All right. Kyle, you're incredible, period. So thank you, Mr. Chair. As I try to get back on to the Zoom call, but I'll distort in the audio. Hopefully I don't. Who's that to me off? I'll screen share. <clears throat> All right. Woo! Right. Let's do this the decent way. I don't have to drive with audio, right? Nope. It's like close this window. <coughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, those Toastmasters and guests, those in between, those who aren't sure. I am Toastmaster Daniel Jones, who is your lexicologist for this evening's medium. Mm -hmm. There it is. <clears throat> this is Kettle. Come on, technology, work with me. How do I share on this slide? We know that. 
Thank you. Awesome. I did a thing. Mm -hmm. I plug my laptop in the process. Yeah. Hey there. Hi. Hey. Hi. Professional. Yeah. So, of course, in light of today's film, I decided to go with the Bohemian background. Mm hmm. Oh, the children are in the background, the friends are hanging with that. <laughs> but it's not about them, it's about us. So the role of the next apologist is to introduce and publicize a new word for members to use throughout the meeting and after the conduct of this With that being said, our word of the day. Long, long and Long and yes. Long and Long ga ne me ti. Got you. I was wondering. Long and Long and Long and Now, of course, this uh, is a now. See, I take back to the school days. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Longanimity is a noun which basically means to be patient, endurance of hardship, injuries, or offense. And forbearance. The example that I decided to use for the this meeting <laughs> if you stay relaxed and smiling while you're waiting to get a driver's license, or on hold with the cable company. You you've got an admirable an, an, you've got an admirable longanimity. Longanimity. Was someone like to attempt to use this very interesting word in the sentence? Thank you, teacher. Thank you so much, Mr. President. I relish the brilliance of the concept of how clubs like luminaries and visionaries went through great elements of longanimity to reach such stalwart levels of excellence in District 46. All right, all right. Anyone else to give it a try? TM knows, thank you for volunteering. <laughs> You're very awesome. Says the TM will get to find out. How should you Toastmasters? I just want to share how Luminary Toastmasters had a huge around anonymity when our president couldn't actually be present due to her being a graduate. Mm. We have had a really scrutinizing time and process that year. Oh okay. my goodness. <laughs> All right. Would someone like on our Zoom call like to give it a try? All right, Tia Miles. I know, I want to do one. Okay, go hey, ahead. Hi, everybody. Hi, hey. hey, guys. How are you? I don't miss you. Hey, you're Too bad, too sad. You're the first one to say it, so I know you miss me the most. <laughs> yeah. During my classes at PTBI, I've realized that I have 
Um, someone could put the word back up for me, please. Longan longanimity. <laughs> yes. Longanimity. That's the word. Yes. <laughs> okay, I did a great job. Okay. During my time at BTVI, I've learned to possess longanimity due to the clients, the teachers. And the star. The end. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, early. The end. Tia Miles, are you ready to give us an example of your longanimity? Yes. Uh, thank you for calling upon me. If that's, um, to, if that's one of the things to say, um, longanimity. Uh, when I was in high school and the early days of college and I discovered depression and alcohol, my mother had a lot of longanimity pulling me through the darkest years of my life. Oh my goodness. Thank you very much. <laughs> we applaud the come up. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Ooh, rehab, baby. Wonderful. Oh my. <laughs> Any more volunteers? Any two more persons? See a minute, I hear you loud and clear in the spirit. <laughs> Shows how the family I love taught you a sense of longanimity. Tia Minas, I told you to switch to a live data, but now you will send me here. What about you, Tia Wallace? <laughs> Hold on, give me a second. I'll give you five. Okay. She's here, sir. Three, two, one. The amount of long the, the <laughs> amount of longanimity yeah. that it will take me to understand just how the mind of Postmaster Daniel Jones functions. <laughs> <laughs> it will probably be one of the greatest discoveries alongside sliced bread. Who hurt you in this meeting? You. <laughs> It was the five second thing. It caught me off guard. You said give you a second, so I gave you five seconds instead. I thought I you were just going to say, okay. You know what? Just for that, Tia knows. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> Thank you for volunteering. Which is a now to be patient, endurance of hardship, injuries, or offense. But oh my God, that's how I am tonight! Oh my God, that's how I am tonight! Grace is going so Not in this session! Thank you. Call for all our offense. Anyway.
<laughs> you are our everyday life. Yes, long and limited. Yeah. I just found that today. Yes, it's allegedly. <laughs> yeah. It actually took long and limited for each of us to make this far. It took long and limited for this nation to make it as far as it did. Sure it did. <laughs> no matter how forward or backward or onward or be forward, that would be like. Be forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank you once again to our psychologists. So, alright. Uh, As I told you before, I was actually playing hot takes. And those hot takes could be anything from something that will get your Bahamian card revoked to something as simple as I don't like catfish fries. Right? Right, basically. <laughs> so, Okay, so that being said, I'd like to um, give our- Wait, hold on, you, wait, hold on, sorry. Yes? You were saying something to make your behemoth car get revoked? Yeah, it could, it could be- Okay, so okay, you... can I, can I, can I, can I, I could change mine, please, because- Oh, yeah, sure. Mine hate me for this. Oh, like, okay. to mine now? I like the sound of that, I like the sound of that. Okay, and I'd like actually to give a moment to Orly and Arceus. So, like I said, write down any um, the Asian hot takes that you feel to get your Bahamian card revoked, or it could be something simple. And as I told you, as I told you before about the sports, which thank you by the way, Coastmaster Williams, for telling me about sailing being a national sport. I said that. Thank you, Toastmaster Jones, for helping Toastmaster Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for working together as a cohesive team to bring the point across. Forward and upward and onward together. together. <laughs> yes. As true as that is, I still believe it should be baseball, but that's my hot take. Mm -hmm. Now, another hot take could be something as simple as thing that stirs up conversation. Like, for instance, another one of my hot takes is that... I believe that we shouldn't be a car-dependent nation anymore. Hmm. Reach. <laughs> I personally believe that we're too small of an island to be... We're too small of a nation general, whether it be the size of each islands, to really be so bad of that. We should be teleporting, I totally agree with you. No! <laughs> about that. There's other ways to get around. You mean like you should build roads because of an You mean like copy? No. No. <laughs> you want all to ride on that. Say no. what? I don't mean just what. Do you see that thing on that <laughs> And part of the reason for that need is because of exhaust. But that's in the end of Me, me, you are supposed to turn that long. Ah, 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 all right, terrific. Terrific. Okay. It's a simple. 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 Okay, and on that note, I'd like to bring on our table topic session. So, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for him. She's one of a kind. She's probably going to be somebody one day. But until then, 
his name, and his name is Kyle Lowry. Hello, good day, everybody. Woo! Oh my goodness, I know him! Woo! Yeah. All right. Okay, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I am your Table Topics Master for this evening's meeting, and the role of the Table Topics Master is to uh, give everybody who is on the agenda or not on the agenda an opportunity to give a one to two minute impromptu speech and uh, if we get the course of days it would be fitting to have a good discussion a good discussion as we talk about moving forward upward all the together because sometimes in order for us to move forward because <clears throat> sometimes in order for us to move forward we have to talk about things we disagree with things that you may feel like you're anti, or you may want to be pro things instead of anti things in order to move forward. So, and some of those things would be centralized ideas. So, for the, so for the ideas, I brought up this game that I made up called Bahamian Blasphemy. <laughs> okay, so each of you have given me uh, your Bahamian hot take, and What's going to happen is I'm going to shake up this box and wiggle the papers and come up with a baby hot take. And I'm going to ask uh, three of you mm -hmm. to stand up and give, and give a one to two minute speech on why you disagree with this hot take. Hey. Now, the key of this is one of you is the person that actually said it. That's for us to find out. Remember, if I call on you, you're supposed to disagree with whatever the hot take is, and then we're going to figure out who actually said it. And after we figure out who says it, we'll find out it's cool now. there. <laughs> we found out their own personal beliefs and why they believe it. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so. Let's see if we can come up with something lukewarm to get it started. Okay, ready? <laughs> I asked for lukewarm and I think I may have gotten it. Probably not. So, our Bahamian hot dick. Our first point is the Bahamas has the worst tongue critics. <laughs> what? Yeah. Only one place is Dukong for the stove. So what? Like that don't make no sense to me. The Bahamas has the worst tongue critics. Now, you want hush puppies or something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. They trying to figure it out. I would like to call on Postmaster. <laughs> Ernesto Williams, Toastmaster Nelson Smith, and Toastmaster Kareem Wildrain. No, so no, one no, out no. of these three genuine men actually said that um, <clears throat> that. See him, Nelson Smith. <laughs> yeah, I don't see him now. He's oh. not yes. dead. No, he's dead though. Yeah. Oh. Can you give me the options again, please? Okay. Well, that actually. Okay, well. Okay, so in, okay, so in his absence, let's do a different hot take. Dylan? Oh, never yeah. mind. 
So th those are the three that I would like to call on. So starting off in person, that was not Okay, so uh, like Antonio. I said, huh? Antonio. Antonio. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so so as I said, so I don't like chicken sauce. Why is it that you have to like chicken sauce? Everybody, Okay, let me set the scenery. Let me set the scenery for you. You just come from this big Boston party. And on your mind is food. What else you gonna eat? You don't gonna go eat no wing? You're gonna get some nice good stuff from Papa Sid because that is taste so good. Like nice and hot. It's like, ooh, when you see that all spice floating and that water clean. Jesus Christ, yes. Y'all know. Y'all y'all mouth watering? That's my mouth watering. I might call Papa Sids tomorrow and put in an order. Cause like that's just so that's like the best thing ever. That and cheap on sauce? With the pepper. I mean no hot sauce. I mean in whole pepper. Scorch on it. My God. I make you want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I rest my case. I'm loving it. All right. Okay, so now Toastmaster Jaja. Toastmaster Jaja. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the hot take is I don't like chicken sauce. So tell us why you like chicken sauce. Wait, okay, repeat the take, please. I don't like chicken sauce. I don't like chicken sauce. And I am too, just confirming. You're supposed to disagree with it. You're supposed to say, wow. yeah. yeah. I like chicken sauce. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. I don't know if y'all, and pardon my bohemian ears for the moment. I don't know if anybody in here has ever had a sick day. And if you were to say no, I am calling 911 in Jesus because I don't think you're supposed to exist. But anyways, I don't think anybody has ever had a sick day and you lying in your bed, you sweating because you have a fever or you, you just, your stomach just really hurting you. And if y'all have a mother like my own, Y'all know what she doing. She taking down one bag a chicken already, re not already seasoned or anything. Me little weird. Not little, not a lot. Anyways, my apologies for getting distracted. <laughs> she chopping up her onions. Ah, you watch, you hand her chop. And you lying in your bed, you wonder what she doing. You hear her chopping up onion. You have opened up the fridge a bunch of times. You really can't go in there because according to the, to, to you, what you told her, you were sick. So you really can't get up and like see what she doing. Y'all see what I get? Y'all see my drift? Yeah. And it's not until, yeah. it's not until you smell the air. It gently touches your nostril. The mm. smell of chicken sauce on your sick day. It's nothing more than someone bringing you a bowl, a nice, hot 
chicken sauce with the chicken all season, the lime juice just hitting just where it need to. And just the right of spice, just the right amount of spiciness. And right on the side is a nice buttered piece of Johnny cake. Just oh for your sick day. Regardless if it's fake or not, but who is to say we really aren't doctors hell? There's <laughs> nothing that will make you feel better I than mean. a nice bowl of chicken sauce. So, um, table topics master. No, I think it's Antonio because banana. Why is my eyes counting? It can't be white. It's like planting. What happened? Why you can't do planting? Plant them off from them banana. Like plant banana. 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 So what you? So what? Do, so what do you? Do like what, what type of bread you have on the side? I just bread, wondering. Bread from tree and spray free. Okay, so it's Antonio. She's the boss. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so okay, so I think it's more than half a minute. Aside from, I'm just going to put this on the record. I will remember this. And now the real. So I also like to point out. Remember, everybody, this is a remember, everybody, this is a safe space, open mind. It's time for us to move forward up the wrongwood, and the way we do it is by opening up a conversation. So, with that being said, aside from the three people who just spoke, don't vote for this. Okay, so who believes that it was Toastmaster and Antonia with the children? Okay. Only one? One, two? Wow. Y'all right. please call me because banana cannot be in no chicken soup. <laughs> 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 one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, so by a show of mind, two things that it was Toastmaster Orly. Okay, wow. You have still on Mr. Guilty. Nobody. Okay, wow. All right, cool. Who thinks it was Toastmaster Jaja Orly? I feel as though she's been forced to sleep. She says someone so down. Okay, so by the looks of the votes, actually, it appears most people believe that it was those last time to have. All right. <laughs> yeah, banana. <laughs> okay, so I'm here to tell you that it's not Toastmaster and Denier. Mm -hmm. All right, now, um, of course, as one of the ladies on the virtual platform, I would like it to reveal herself and explain why you don't like chicken sauce. No, <laughs> it's me. It's me. I knew it. <laughs> I did a great job. I am the imposter. It's okay. So 
every Sunday. Like I swear, I sorry Lord, I don't think it's real, but okay. Every Saturday, my mommy, she used to make us up, playing fake Christian music and tell us we gotta clean up. I don't know, after we clean up, we get in chicken sauce like this. What happened to other food? And then I just started to hate chicken sauce, but I love me a sheet so it's just chicken sauce just annoying me now. Like I can't even stand to smell chicken sauce. My belly is hurting all. And she's paying for mine. And then she still does make it. And then sometimes she don't even make me no food. She doesn't make a big old pot of chicken sauce and tell me just eat the chicken. I don't want that. So it's me, guys. I'm so sorry. Antonia, I still would say you sus. You just banana? Wow. 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 Okay, so I have no issue with the banana. Actually. It's green, but I have none either. I think it's a exactly. But I love how y'all keep forgetting. <laughs> like, <laughs> if it wasn't like soup, if it wasn't soup, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> soup, that's too watery, man. That's too watery. That's too watery. Like, girl, come on, be for real. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, for real. Girl, come on. And it's a I'm sorry. Mr. Jones. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson, but come on, be for real. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. This thing's stuck. I mean, I. Okay, so for our next hot take, I I wanted to pick one that has nothing to do with food, but I'm gonna go with food again only because this is such a strong. I thought I don't like chicken sauce with that. This is just hatred. <laughs> Dylan because Dylan is like uh, one you have to be friends with, so if they shoot up the place, they can tell you don't come to school that day. Yeah, but that's not the time. That was the time. I got more. I got more. I got more. The strange, okay, so the funny thing about that is he didn't even say that. The person who actually did is either. Toastmaster Ernesto Williams, <laughs> Toastmaster Daniel Jones. Okay, okay, I feel, I feel right. <laughs> or Toastmaster Three Minutes. Three, hmm. Yeah, I can hear y'all. Okay, great. So in that order. So, hmm. I mean, uh, that was a very. The copper is Toastmaster Jones. That was very. Oh, I got it. Um, Guess I. So. Yeah. Okay, so I guess Postmaster and Esther Williams, please stand and explain to us why you like Benny Cake so much. Why it's your favorite dessert. Oh, well, basically, okay. why you actually disagree with the person who feels so strong against it. Yes. Thank you so much for this table topics, Master. Some people, I don't know as well. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> but aside from some people, the cake tastes so illustrious. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a neat, earthy flavor. I remember back when I was younger, my first time tasting it was when my dad brought it after church. And I really liked it. I thought that it was such a unique taste. I don't know, it's cute. I like it. And then I had another piece. And then I ate my brother's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and then people started taking Benny Cake away from me because I would consume it on and off it. And so we're going to pray for those about to die to join. And we're going to continue to finish appreciate the brilliance that is. Thank you. All right, thank you. Toastmaster Jones, please. Despite popular belief, there are many behemoth desserts that. You will fall in love with it. If your coconut tart, your pineapple tart, your apple tart. But the most unique, in my opinion, is Benny Cake. Now, 
Banishing is something that I love. You gotta have a lot of make it properly. Because why do they bite your banana true. cake? It true. tastes it tastes and feels like something. That's true. That's but you know, when your good granny twice removed from the family, yeah. seeing your granny, yeah. granny. <laughs> you know when it's festive and you for Christmas and Thanksgiving. And she decides that you know what? It's time for a treat. She's not gonna give you a popsicle. She's not gonna give you a lollipop. She's not gonna give you iced tea. She's gonna give you some baby cake that is hard wrapped in the saran wrap. It does not have its, it does not have a specific shape. Each one shapes different, like some of these guys who walk around, <laughs> as they say. But the flavor, that sweet By flavor, By it mind. doesn't matter in your mouth. <laughs> but of course, as you chew, each chew is a birth of sensation uh -huh. that you cannot deny. That's why Benny cake, even though people think that I'm an imposter, Benny cake is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, now, Toastmaster Menace, I tell us. No, why do you like Benny Cake so much? Why it doesn't deserve to be erased from existence? Tell us why you like Benny Cake. Toastmaster, you're in this. Okay, can you all help me? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Okay, first off, I just want to say, anyone who thinks that Benny Cake is not a good dessert or one that should be wiped off of the map or face of the earth, they probably need to get a brain scam because something ain't right there. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I have to say, from growing up as a child, I absolutely loved Ben Cake. Because Benny Cake to me just had it's one of the easiest things to make. And it just has like Toastmaster or DTM and Nasta Williams said that earthy taste and just being able to taste the nice flavor and sauces and the nice roasted sesame seeds and wherever the drizzles you want to add to it just it sends your taste buds on an experience that you can't get from anything or anywhere else because no one makes Benny cake like how we do in the Bahamas. And not to mention Benny cake is, it's just something that makes you feel at home because you know when you're getting a Benny cake, you're getting something that's made with love, warmth, with care, and something that is just so unique that you can't even find a recipe online like that, or at least a decent one, you say that. But <laughs> yes, I just have to say that Benny Cake is something that you shouldn't even be considering as a dessert that's not noteworthy or something that shouldn't be included when you're having a festivity or a bohemian festivity. And that's all the more why it should be a dessert that we cherish or something that should not be wiped off the face of the earth. Thank you. I want you to know we lying. We are lying. We are lying. As a baker, where's that sweet seed from in Benny Cake? As a baker, baking is your profession. It depends on how you do it, but usually that's 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 how I have mine. Okay. Mm. All right. So I'm gonna say you. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much, Toastmaster Korean Minister. Okay, so by a show of hands, quickly, who thinks that it was Toastmaster Ernesto Williams who doesn't like Benny Cake much? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Question one. Why is singing? I feel that stove is. Anybody else? If it was Korean, I think it's Korean. Because he read, he made up this impromptu impromptu. He referenced the DM. Because he had nothing to say. Okay. And he stepped with his own foot. Oh As he was like, it's not something that we but should cherish, again, but it's something that we should cherish. But then again, I feel like you're the imposter. Yeah. Okay, because so when, when he bring up the food before he even like say it, he's like, he's got like Thank this. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like the evil villain. Okay, so show us who thinks it's Daniel. Um, 
Mm -hmm. I raised down for Kareem too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it looks like most people believe that it was Kareem Smith. Oh, you're probably wrong. So I'm hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Wow. You, sh you should be hurt, Kareem, because even if you dislike something, you don't seem like the type of person who would want to erase the existence of. That's like the Plus, um. Plus, burn them with a stake. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay, I'm there. Who you? Daniel. Yeah. 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 All right. I want to vote. I want to vote. Because. I voted for Daniel. I think it was only me. So you all have to give me a prize. Because Daniel traumatic. Okay. Burn him with a stake. That's tr that's Daniel Ali. That's his Ali. Okay. Point, Bye, point of order. I would like the person that said this hot take to reveal themselves and explain why they feel so strongly against me. <laughs> so... Play about the way up for real. Yeah. Who will say something like that? Yeah. But I got eyes out for real. I wish I wish I had said it out loud, but his speech was just just a bit too short for him to not be the um the imposter. I couldn't think of anything else to say. Okay. Oh, you got me good. You got me good. I'm speaking about it. That was all a complete farce. The steak, though. I got something. Though it is so disgusting. You know what Benny tastes like? Benny King tastes like someone just decided that they couldn't make it to a store or a restaurant or the kitchen. <laughs> and so they just dropped outside and so brilliantly red dirt and said, oh, this looks tasty. And some twigs. And they decided to mix sugar and water with dirt. <laughs> Brown sugar. And bake it in a black stove outside ah. to produce bin cake. Ah. It literally tastes like sugar and dirt mixed together. I think it's the worst thing ever made. Half of some of what I said was a bit true. My father did bring it mm -hmm. to us after church one day when I was young, about mm -hmm. eight years old, and I tasted it and I immediately spit it out. And he got mad. Oh. spit out what he purchased and I said, well, the only way to resolve that is to just never purchase it from me ever again. <laughs> because it was that disgusting. So I've never, I've tried it once or twice afterwards because people said what Toastmaster Jones said. Maybe the right person didn't make it. No change. I was lying. It oh, is. Like, oh, it's wonderful. But you all But I was the one who wrote it. Mm -hmm. But yes, it, it is definitely horrendous. I do not think it should be anything close to this beautiful country that we call the Bahamas. I think it needs to be wiped off the face of the map. Um, and I'm going to, I want to pray for Toastmaster Korean Minutes because clearly his taste buds need to be boiled! <laughs> <laughs> boiled <laughs> like she tongue! <laughs> I cannot believe what I'm hearing. <laughs> wow, it is disgusting. And thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for sharing such a strong take on something that may have made it as a Bahamian delicacy one day. Thank God it did. Hallelujah. Okay, so for baby sauce. Okay, so I would okay, so I would like to end my table talk with one more hot take. And thankfully this one is not about food. So this person believes that Bahamians have silent black crab syndrome. Oh. Does, any, does, silent. Everybody, does everybody know what black crab syndrome means? That's how it's yes. supposed to be. That means you're stuck in your own ways. Because you don't live on your own Black crab syndrome. Can someone educate Toastmaster tonight? Okay, no. so, okay, so, black crab syndrome. That's from eating all them banana. Use the analogy. So, you know okay. What? okay, so, to Toastmaster, Antonia, and anybody else listening who may not be sure, imagine a bucket full of crabs. Use the cage reference. Okay, cage, okay, cage of crabs. And... Think about it. Think about yeah, it. I mean, okay, black crab syndrome, that's like a crab in a bucket and you can't get 
So they don't necessarily. Not necessarily. Let them finish. Let finish. Think of a kid so, on a lot of crabs inside. Okay, so, Go ahead. Okay, so think about a kid with a lot of crabs in it. So much to a point where there's one at the edge and it knows that we try to eat the crab. So the crab is going to do what it can do to escape. But what does the other crabs do? They reach for that crab as it makes its escape and pull the crab back in the cage to be just like oh the God, rest of the crabs. For real. I hate <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, oh my. well then. <laughs> Okay. It also is based on a lot of the views that sometimes, of course, we know that they have different shades of crabs. They're all yeah. crabs, mm -hmm. but they have different shades, different colors. The shades of crabs. And so they are there. And so they are very adamant about <clears throat> reaching the top, but being the only one to reach the top and get out. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so for this one, I would like to call on. Postmaster Green Will Dream, mm -hmm. Postmaster Tomas Knowles, mm -hmm. and Postmaster Dylan Miles. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. in, that, <laughs> in that order, why is okay, so, you know, I know Dylan talks. In that order, we got in that order, or to be Tomas with Tomas Knowles, he's not. In that order, Toastmaster Green Blue Dream. Why? Okay. Why don't we have silent black crab syndrome? Why do you disagree with this statement? As we have all seen, this independence, it's impossible for Bahamians to have black crab syndrome. Once you listen to Elkin's song. <laughs> and you feel the groove what? and the rhythm what? and which one American girl or booty poppin or we're talking about Elkin 360 I don't know who you're talking about <laughs> Those Elkin 360 oh, have yeah. more songs than um, 1993. Oh, 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 oh,
Uh, table topic master. Um, I'm not sure I understand this completely. So um, the argument I'm hearing is that we have like okay. we're closeted black crab syndrome wow. sufferers. So we the argument is that we like to pull each other down, whether we realize it or not. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, to argue otherwise, I'll say that um, while normally it may seem like we do pull each other down, you know, in this uh, chaotic social landscape which we find ourselves in, uh, if you are skilled and educated enough uh, to go on to greener pastures, other worlds, less conservative countries, less backwards third world nations, people love it. People want each other to get the hell out of here and into those greener pastures, and they're not going to stop you. So is that black crab syndrome? I don't think so. Table Topics Master. Okay, thank you very much, Toastmaster Master. All right, so by a show of hands, who all believe that it was Toastmaster? Korean, well dream. Yeah, no hands. Really, nobody. <clears throat> Hopefully, I'm, I'm gonna. Okay, let's. Okay, hold on one second, man. So, one, two, three, four. One person picked Korean. One person picked. Um, um, no, 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 sorry. One, two, three. There you go. Let's check. <laughs> you pick Korean. You pick <laughs> Korean. I picked it in. And let's see which one else right. Okay. 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 Who believes that it was Korean? Korean. Okay. Who believes that it was uh, Toastmaster Tamar's nose? Yeah. Okay. Who believes that it was Toastmaster Tamar's nose? Me. Okay. Whoever wins one last win, get a dollar from the other person. Now you say what the stakes are. Okay. Because. Okay, so uh, uh, silent black crab syndrome is something that sometimes even I feel like we struggle as a nation to overcome. So I actually agree with this hot take to at least some small degree, but that's only because in other news, we do have ways and we do have people that break us out of this black crab syndrome, and we have people open up, opening up their minds every year. So with that being said, <clears throat> will the person who believes that the Bahamas has silent black crab syndrome reveal himself? Did it? Ah, I was right! <laughs> So I do agree that you have people who are being able to have an out of out of love to get out of the black heart syndrome. But a pure recent and actually viable example, the same one that TM or Jim has pointed out, the song that of Elkin made. What I don't I like. Say anyone. The encouragement was. He left. No, he lost. Oh, thanks so much. So I know where. For the song. The, he had an abundance of encouragement, but the discouragement that he had, along with that one song, the yeah. crowd he has gotten, yeah. is with, it's heavy. This thing about sucks. A lot of people, even artists themselves, are doing. The, I was not actually the same level, or maybe think that they're higher than him. Yeah. As actually saying crushing words towards the performance of the song. And I was not catchy, I was not behind They yet. have? Yes, they have. My, yeah, oh my it, gosh, who did that? Sounds like some of you know, dude. I'm pretty and sure. And for me, selling crab syndrome is something that is, uh, I would say, it's an olden way of the human of a Hamas. Yeah. And although, almost like when people talk about colorism, they think about a sad colorism. But the same as black crab syndrome, a sign of it is still there. Yeah. You have to notice it, see it, and acknowledge it, but but also do not be it. You learn from it. And a lot of people be it, encourage it, and run. 
Stop me, guys. Give me one second. Let me set up. Yes. <laughs> Reminder that you need to start. You should be properly in the one. Eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. One does that. I, I kind of understand where artists are coming from because you can see his performance. Yeah. Here's his music. Your thinking is this really, you know, you know like I, the level of professional palette mm -hmm. that normally should come out in official daily song, you don't see that there. Mm -hmm. I understand the comparison, but that still doesn't give the reason for you to, so great. to bring him down. Yeah. Mind you, he wasn't even in the top three. Yes, sir. But, but he means not the song the box. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. The people wrote yeah, that there. Right. The people wrote that there was so bad that it became good. <laughs> so he's getting the record deal. He's his song is being sung everywhere. Mm -hmm. He was the one performing okay, on the set. Mm -hmm. So now. the only thing to do is just appreciate him, applaud him, send your own music out there still. But I, I mean, his his songs. All right, are... all right, you guys ready? Sorry. Are you standing? Oh. Did... Sorry. We can barely see your chin. Can, oh, sorry, me. Fix computer. Wow, Daniel. Okay. Can you guys see me now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I apologize for the time. I'm in a pretty cold area and I'm sitting yeah. down because I'm in a bit of a tight space. But just bear with me, guys. But other than that, good evening, everyone. I hope that you guys are doing awesome. And my speech is something that I don't think we really focus on a lot. And the title is The Pursuit of Happiness. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just, okay. So before I begin, let me know if you guys can hear the sound. Yes, I can hear Yeah. Oh, my God. You guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Now we can. We can hear you. Okay, great. All right, great. But yes, so I want you guys now to open your eyes. So while you were doing that, you guys were getting what is known as the glimpse of the pursuit of happiness. So when thinking about the pursuit of happiness, it is something that we have to look at as an ultimate goal in life. And it's that, and, and even though it is something that we might not think about because everyone's probably just getting distracted about that 401k, which is we, I'm not gonna lie, or being able to live in their own little suburbia with a white picket fence, which is nice as well. 
the main goal or our ultimate goal in life is to be happy. And whether we choose to acknowledge it or believe it or not, happiness is one of the most sought after things in life and in everything that we do. And happiness is something that we also, we always put at the center of the things that we do, whether it's happiness for ourselves or whether it's happiness for someone else. Why? Because it is what fuels our being. It reminds us that we are alive and well. It satisfies us emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. However, what many don't really take into account is that the pursuit of happiness, it is not a destination. It's not a place that you just have to get to. No, the pursuit of happiness is the journey, the experiences, and being able to enjoy them and being able to make the most out of them. And a good example of that is, think of the most recent vacation that you've been on. It could have been a vacation to Paris or Florida. And instead of really thinking about how much of the things that you wanted to do on that trip or thinking about the trip itself, something that I'm sure once you were done with that trip that stuck in your mind was the experiences, whether it was visiting the Eiffel Tower or being able to see Universal Studios and go on one of those crazy roller coasters, which is my favorite, by the way. Because it, 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 it is something that we have to remember. Uh, that's really the main thing that the pursuit of happiness focuses on. You're that being in that moment, being in that experience, whether you were laughing at the craziest or the dumbest things that you or other people were doing, or just relaxing and just smelling the roses as you walk along the garden. The pursuit of happiness is the us being within that moment, allowing our senses to be within that moment. And that's something that a lot of people, they tend to miss out on. And it's something that when you miss out on, it tends to make it harder for you to really associate happiness within those experiences or to be able to really define happiness. So when looking at happiness or thinking about the pursuit of happiness, there are three L's I want you to think about. And the first L is living life to the fullest. And I'm sure that a lot of us, we have heard that when you want to live life to the fullest, when you want to make the most out of it, I mean, every single bit of it, we have to have no regrets. And I mean, not a single one. Why? Because regrets are basically just ways of us not seeing or ignoring the lessons and the warnings and the teachings that life gives us. Because Without those bad experiences, experiences, without falling over a small P rock or without, let's say, getting burned on a bad deal, which I'm sure we've all experienced once or twice in our life, fortunately, we wouldn't be able to say, well, okay, next time, I'm gonna go about this way, next time for sure, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna make a deal with this person, I'm not gonna make a deal with the devil. Because and those experiences or those things that some people might so-called regrets or just look on as regrets, they're actually stepping stones for us to be able to get to where we want to go or to be able to really get to the, our pursuit of happiness or to enjoy it. And in not having regrets, it really allows us to maximize life, to really be able to see everything in life as an opportunity either an opportunity for us to grow, an opportunity for us to just have fun, or an opportunity for us to see something differently or something through someone else's eyes. And another part associated with that L is to take chances. Another famous saying that I'm sure we're all familiar with is no risk, no reward. And it's basically self-explanatory. If you don't take any risks in life, if you don't decide to do something that you're nervous about or really just take on something you're not entirely sure about, you're not going to really know whether or not you 
we're, we're not really going to be able to really make the most of it, really be able to get rewards from it. Because yes, sometimes by taking risks or certain chances might not always play the way we want them to, but how can we know that unless we try, right? So by doing that, we are allowing ourselves to explore more of life's beauties and pleasures while enhancing who we are in one or more ways. And also too, by us taking chances, it ensures that we are able to see more of like, be able to not miss out on what destiny has for us. Because a lot of times destiny comes knocking on our door. And I mean, sometimes it can come in the strangest ways, ways you would never expect. But unless you take that chance, how will you know? And, and us taking that chance is another important thing that we have, and I mean have to remember or even really take into consideration is that you have to do what you want to do. Not what others tell you to do or not what the world wants you to do, unless you all have the same vision. Why? Because you're going to be miserable. If people are constantly telling you do this, even though you don't like this, do that. This is better. I think this is better. Then eventually, how are you going to be able to really fulfill your will, fulfill the purpose that you have in life, or fulfill your desires? And they're not even your desires to begin with. So in life, we have a lot of times really let our inner child out, the part of you that wants to make the most of the experiences and have fun. And just that voice that says, I want to go on all the roller coasters and to hell with the fairs. Now, moving on to our second L. Our second L is to look at life as a never ending adventure. And the reason why I say this is because life is. Whether you see an adventure as trying something new or maybe, maybe doing something differently, you're always going to be opening up yourself or expanding your horizons. You're always going to be learning new things when you look at life as an, an adventure. You're always going to be going to greater heights, seeing things you've never seen before in ways that you probably Ne probably never imagined they could have been seeing it. And that is something, that, uh, and that's actually the reason why I was able to join you lovely people and visionaries. Because I decided, you know what, although I am nervous about public speaking, although I am shy sometimes, and although I know for sure that I'm not the most bubbly person out there, by me deciding to look at it as an adventure and trying it, I knew that something good had to come up and something did, something good did. Another an important point, and although this is my final point, it's not the least thing or it's not the last thing to consider when it comes to the pursuit of happiness, and that is letting it go. Like Elsa said, let it go, let it go. And that is something that a lot of people do not really look on or look at as important. Because in order for you to move forward and move upward, like the theme says, you have to be willing to let go of the baggage. Because if you're trying to walk and move forward and you have 100 pound weights on you, not even 100, you have 500 pound weights on you. Unless you're Superman, you ain't going anywhere. I can tell you that for sure. Because you're going to have that baggage constantly keeping you in that same place, keeping you in that same position. And by letting it go, it means that you are willing to let go of that baggage. You're willing to let go if you have any of envy, jealousy, hatred, and vengeance. Because those things or those traits, they only make our souls bitter. And they ruin our chances of living our best lives. Because why? Because we end up focusing on other people and their issues or what they have to say about us. We end up focusing on things that we don't like about the world or things we don't like about people. I mean, you don't even get a chance to focus on us. What do I want to do? What are my desires? What's important to me? Is that helping me to, get, to go where I want to go? Is that helping me in my pursuit of happiness? And, and us allowing ourselves to be dragged down by, those, by, that, by that negativity, it makes it extremely hard for us to fulfill that part of our, that the part of life that we are destined to fulfill. 
and <clears throat> excuse me, and when we're not able to fulfill our destiny, it makes us feel empty. So in the end, the pursuit of happiness is our main goal. Like I said, whether it's something we choose to see or choose to acknowledge or not, it is something that continues and will always continue to drive our very being. And it is something that continues to be one of our main sources for living, believe it or not. So when we, when, 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 so when, when in, in living our daily lives, no matter what we're doing, no matter what position we're in, let us not be misguided with the perception or the by perception of others that happiness is you getting to a certain spot, you getting a Mercedes or getting a car, you having a house, having a family, having the kids, doing this, doing that, solving world hunger, curing cancer. No, it's none of those. Well, those are nice, but you get what I'm saying. The pursuit of happiness is us simply living in the moment and truly just copy the or seizing the day. Because when we do that, it allows us to live a life that is full, adventurous, and free. Thank you. So let's go with this one and let's do, okay, let's do a quick in person versus virtual. So oh. actually, actually, okay. That's a big audience. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, so the Bahamian hot take is we don't protect our resources, nor turn them into profit. Shout out, one ounce. <laughs> 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 we, don't, we don't protect. Wait, I didn't hear. What, what was the pro? The hot take is we don't protect our resources, nor turn them into profit. Mm, I am feeling too smart to say something like that tonight. <laughs> Okay, so Nancy, who all is in our virtual platform? Dylan. Oh, um, William, hello. Matt. Darling. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. So, on, okay. So in that case, I'll say, I'll say, either Kareem Wildring. Uh huh. Or Dylan Miles, who here believes we don't protect our resources nor turn them into profit? Okay, so Toastmaster Kareem will bring it. Tell us. Tell us, because you don't walk? Huh? Do you don't walk? No, it's saying that the, the hot take is that we don't protect our we resources. We don't rid it, we don't it, we don't walk one of them. Yeah, it's one of them. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Yeah, it's one of them. Because actually, we don't walk. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't protect our resources mm -hmm. nor turn them into profit. So Toastmaster Korean will dream. Tell us. I'm arguing for why we actually do. do. Yes. Okay. And and you can also say I'll um, turn them into profit. Okay. Good.
We all know about this billion dollar edifice. Oh, this this beautiful complex called Bahama Hotel and Casino that was built a few years ago. And they do a few things in terms of conservation that helps leverage our resources and make them into amenities that people could enjoy. Bahama has the largest I'm going to speak out of my, I'm going to put my foot in my mouth. Bahama has the largest open air aquarium. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. Pause, 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 pause. Pause, 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 pause. No, in, in fact, in fact. Um, I, well, I, 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 okay, I, I want, okay, Atlanta has the open, largest open air aquarium. In the world, one of the largest in the world, yes. One of the largest, certainly top three, right? Um, Bahama has these, these these various conservation efforts where they preserve the natural environment, you know, so they actually, uh, um, what you call it, create these safe spaces where they help to grow uh, fishes and plants, etc., and use them for tours, etc. So they are some of the few people that actually. Um, capitalize on the environment while nurturing it. And I think it's an encouraging model to show how we can continue doing that throughout the rest of the Bahamas. But we also have other things like a Bonefish Park, where you could go canoeing and kayaking. We have um, snorkeling tours with, um, um, what's the place name? That out, out deep, Stars Cove. We have snorkeling tours. No, you can actually go and swim. Like yellow when they say, if my mom was in the Titanium, mm-hmm. and you have opportunities to go ahead and swim with the with the um, okay. not dolphins, but even be in the water with the nurse sharks, and I did that as well. So yeah, we have various opportunities where we leverage what we have and turn them into profit. Some we are sad in terms of like salt, like you, you say, oh, we don't own more than salt, but at least somebody is using it. So yeah, we actually do. Okay, thank you, Toastmaster Kareem <clears throat> Okay, so Toastmaster Dylan Miles. Okay, uh, thanks for calling on me, Table Topics Master. Could you repeat the prompts? Okay, so the Bahamian is... Oh, something about we don't hold on to our resources? Um, we don't protect our resources, nor do we turn them into profit. Okay, so the argument is that we don't protect our resources. Um, to that, I say... Um, I say this to a lot of my friends that people sometimes complain that like uh, the Bahamas, like even here in New Providence, like the capital or, or anywhere else, it's too slow. They say there's not much going on. There's not like much of a nightlife compared to somewhere like in, say, the States. Uh, to them, I would argue that there's actually a lot going on. Like there's more things going on than ever. The Bahamas has the highest uh rate it there's the most kfcs per capita we have the most churches per capita we have the most liquor stores per capita we have the most drunk driving accidents per capita we do. uh we have um probably the most homeless per capita so we got all kinds of resources right here and they're all ours you know and uh it's a it's like a cycle you know it's it keeps going and going table yeah. topics master we got this okay The mortician. That's still jobs. <laughs> hey, the so most morticians per capita. Export get to bring in the casket. The people get to build the casket. The morticians. 
Okay. Okay. So on that note, who believes that it's Toastmaster Kareem will dream? Seven, and who believes that it's Toastmaster Miles? All right. So, well, the person who actually believes that the Bahamas does not protect. Its resources, no profit from them. Please reveal themselves. Yeah. So. Um... Ha! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm just. <It's... laughs> Baham has the biggest <laughs> opener. No, 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 see, I actually... He calls his top and I was doing it. No, Baham, Baham has, no, it, it has something, man. It is something. No, 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 beyond, beyond the golf course. They go off something that's one of the largest. Okay, we ain't talking about the casino. Okay, we ain't talking about the casino. But, mm -hmm. but, but, beyond that, uh -huh. um, the reason why I said that is... In some, in, in many instances, where we do certain things, like we might go dump in, in open fields or, you know, at the dock, when they clean the conch, they throw the conch shells right down in the water. And actually, the accumulation of conch shells repels conch, conchs from coming in. They actually don't like the scent, so they move out. Or, you know, we, we there are some things that, that we do and in fact, we don't actually, in terms of conservation of like reefs and stuff like that, I don't think there's any national efforts of preserving and helping to regrow reefs because they, well, these guys, they, they try, you know, but just based on just some things that I see, I, I wonder if we as a country takes it seriously enough. Nope. Because if if we leverage these for tourism, shouldn't we ensure that that we support these different elements as best as possible? Yeah. You know, and even with hurricanes, etc., they help. And if there is no budget to invest in these directly, then that means we really don't take it seriously, and we only know how to uh, use it and kill it, and and not really take care of it. So I, I, I think while we have some people who are actually creating things to help benefit these things, it's not national efforts or it's not priority beyond catering to tourists or doing other things. When that is a part of catering to tourists by protecting our ecosystem, which a lot of people come for. So yeah, that's just a kind yeah. of a thought. Yeah. Thank you for that. I especially like thinking about that one because it made it remind me of one of my aspects of people because I feel like we don't really utilize our people as much mm -hmm. in some ways. Yeah. It feels like we depend a lot on export, at least our government sure does, depend mm -hmm. on a lot of export, whereas we have plenty of talented, educated men, people who do. Yeah. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. You know, so for People whatever know. reasons, you know, they they think outside foreign is, is better in a lot of cases. Yeah. So. Black crab. <laughs> yeah. That's the black crab syndrome right there. Yeah. That's why a lot of Bahamans go overseas because mm -hmm. they don't make no sense staying here. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I do all this work, and the only way I can do, get a job is because of who I know. That will make no sense. I can go in the States. I can use that same thing. My same degree. I spent thousands of dollars for. And go make my money. My figures. And then come back and be a phone. Go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright. Now, a uh, point of... Um, just a point to mention. Do you want to be mindful of the time? We have 8.30. Do we have any more speakers? We have one more speaker. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so on that note, Toastmaster Jaja Ja Wallace. She's speaker? That is the last speaker, correct? Uh, or at least we could be scared of the last week. Oh, jeez. We have already, yeah, we have a video. We could be scared of the last week. Jeez. PPE, um, could we be scared of the next week? 
Yeah, we're, just, we're scheduling you for like next year and all that. Do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't need me to. I don't mind speaking next week. Because <laughs> it's really three minutes to cool so Yeah, it's three minutes and fifty minutes. seconds. Because so we can schedule on two. Um, yeah, just saying bind us together, Lord, just let us just go. <laughs> because it's your call. No, it, it, we, we, yeah, it's, it's, what is schedule next? Yeah, your, your call. We'll be scheduled. No, next no, week. Not next week. My schedule. Yeah. I'll get back to that. Uh, well, we have a video either way, so we always put that in. Okay. <laughs> um. But well, that just means they can't. All we want to, all we want is want to just go ahead and just do it back to back, and then we close. That's up no, to you. Look at the time. Oh, Josh, Josh, are here and ready, and we get a video. We could always play next time. <laughs> Yo, call VP. Pardon? I put in your arms. Um, what? I didn't mean to say um. But <laughs> I don't. I it's fine either way. If if it's better for everybody, if I give my speech next week, I do not mind giving. <laughs> speech. I can give my speech. I, I would. You know what? I would rather I plan my speech a bit more. She wants uh, to be more prepared. But okay. I can't do it tonight. If if. I mean, it's literally one more minute until close. Okay, for the sake of time, we will be scheduled speeches. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, okay, well, in that case, for the sake of time, I'd like to do our final hot take of the night. Huh? Yeah, I the GE. Just say it all down. Definitely Jerry Bible. Just say it all down. Who's the name it is? Okay, so I'd like to call on our general evaluator, Toastmaster Gray Woo! All right, good evening, everybody. I'm generally right for tonight, and we will move quickly through this thing. The meeting started on time at 6 30. We, um, our chairperson, has did a wonderful job at ushering us throughout the evening. Give me a hand clap. Give our chairperson a hand clap. I particularly like the. The hot takes, right? Or you say what, what Bahamian blasphemy? Yeah, no. That that is a that, that, that's a catchy name, Bahamian blasphemy. I like that. So yeah, it was very engaging. I like how you chose multiple people that we had to kind of pick. Who was it? So that's a good take on it. I, it was you was able to use that throughout the meeting, in between different segments. If I could call, if I could um, mention two ways of possibly improving this. We want to there are opportunity to improve the flow of the meeting in terms of having gaps where there is nothing going on or searching for cards, etc. So if we could quickly transition to main points, it will be great. And, but beyond that, thank you for a great job. Uh, thank you, Speaker One, Kareem Minnis, for giving us a wonderful speech. It was very encouraging, as Dylan Miles said. So thank you for that. I, Points of improvement will come later on, but great job, great content. And the only thing I'll say, if you could stand or be able to have room to move around, or even work on your vocal variety, just to vary, you know, go up, down, more energy, pace, etc. You may add a little bit more to it. But great job, everybody. Thank you all. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. We will, um, forego the timers report if we have any and any reports will be posted in the group if we do have some back to you chairperson and then back to <laughs> okay thank you general evaluator mm -hmm. okay so the whole point of this meeting is in order for us to move forward and up and on together we have to have those conversations and those conversations can involve things we agree with and I disagree with, it, but the only way to move is change. And with that being said, I would like to change the role at the lectern. So, mm -hmm. thank you for allowing me to be a chairperson for this meeting. And
Okay, thank you so much for being here for this Pazina meeting. Uh, I will now call on our president. Woo! Who shall now come to the podium? Yeah! And close us out! Let me see some virtual reactions and let me hear some noise if you enjoy this educational session. Woo! <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, without further ado, do we have any guests in the call? Guests in the room? I see no, I just see Dylan's wonderful face. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> nice glasses, they match your eyes. All right, so I have any announcements. Nelson's going once. Nelson's going twice. Close. Do I have a motion for adjournment? I see Smith Recognized. motion for adjournment of the team. Do I have a second? Oop. I have those master card with second. Recognized. It has been motioned and seconded by T.M. Smith and T.M. Edwards that we end tonight's meeting of Missionary Center by 4. Triple A1. And whatever time it is, p.m. 8.34 p.m. <laughs> the AC is trying to kill me right now on my side, so I gotta make this quick. And all the polls, please keep it to yourself. I mean, show hearts or reactions on the call. All the polls. All opposed going once, all opposed going twice, and all opposed closed. With that being said, we have majority rule for motion of adjournment. So I now adjourn tonight's week of the chair. Sign fight for Triple A Y at 8.34 p.m. Fight you, good night, drive safe. Alright. Alright, guys. Good night. 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 Oh my god, it's in my head right now. 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 It's in my yeah, and then it, it was on like it was on a good while before you came, so I had to kind of cool the room off a little bit. Listen, my side is on overdrive right now. I'm ready to cry. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. you all need to have my voice changed, you know? Yeah, I have it. Yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's my team talk. What's the song say? Walk it out, walk it out, walk it out. <sighs> and I'm hungry, so I'm not asking for.